I'm back. It's time to do a big wad tier list video. We have so many, <laughs> we have so many models to get through. So let's get started. So first to define what all our all of our categories actually mean. So an S tier unit is a unit that you are going to auto include in Big Wa. You're going to auto include. Right now in this meta, for example, we are going to auto include a weird knob shaman. A weird knob shaman is an auto include. In my like obviously this is all my opinion. The weird knob shaman is an auto include because we need um, the great green hand of Gork or the, the hand of Gork. It's a spell that, that it's so powerful and it's the only thing that we can use to actually cast it. So it's definitely going in. Another really good example of a um, S tier unit is going to be a war chanter. War chant, like we need them. We're, we're definitely going to include them in our in our list, right? Same thing with a Wurgog prophet. A Wurgog prophet is an auto include in a big wall list. A tier units are units that are almost auto include, not necessarily auto include, but they're really, really, really strong. If you're not in, if you're not including, it's because something else in A tier sort of beat you out, right? Or B tier units are situationally good. So depending on the meta, depending on the matchup, depending on all these things, you might not play an A tier unit for a B tier unit that is really good against the in the particular meta. C tier units are just sort of bad. They're not very good. They're not going to bring a lot of value to your table. But, you know, they're not unplayably bad. They're just regular old bad. And then F tier are models that I just think are unplayable. Like you, you just never want to play them. They're just they're just not going to be going to be good in my in, in my view. So, like for a good example of an F tier uh, unit in my opinion would be uh, a Kilbo. People, I've had this uh, conversation with people, and so far I've, there's, I've never come across any argument that's really changed my mind. The reason I think that that, that the kill blow is F tier is because um, it can do nothing. It can do nothing. It can do nothing a lot. Depending on the matchup, if your opponent is, is only running like one big monster or no big monsters, it's just going to sit there. If it moves, it doesn't get to do anything. And I did the math on it once. Best case scenario, if it has all the buffs that you can give it, it does nothing half of the time. It does nothing half of the time. Something like 46% of the time, it's going to do its damage. Right? But if your opponent isn't running anything that's got a bunch of wounds on it, or if they like if they just don't care, it's, it's not going to do anything. And that inconsistency, that swinginess... I just, I just don't like it. If you were playing a Thunder Lizard, or if you were playing against a Thunder Lizard's list, and they had five different big monsters, and you had three kill bows, you're gonna slay. You're gonna slay. But it doesn't, um, it's too inconsistent for me. I would never bring it to a tournament, for example, and put it on the table and be like, oh, it did nothing this game. I'd rather have 100 points to do something else. I'd rather have another unit of Ard Boys, for example. Um, speaking of Ard Boys, Ard Boys are another uh, auto-include they, I think, are the strongest of our battle line units. They're really cheap. They're going to fill the slots. They have, they're have, they great at stalling. Uh, because they have three attacks, it's nice to give them plus one to hit, plus one to wound later in the game. Like, they're an auto-include. Like you're, you're I've never seen a big wall list that doesn't run Ard Boys in it. Um, brutes? I'm tempted. Like, is, are Brutes auto-includes, or are they just really, really good? Are Brutes auto-includes, or are they just A tier? Hmm. I don't think that they're auto-includes. People might disagree with me on this one, but I just don't think... I think that you could, like, run lists without them. I think that you could, you could do a good job and still have everything that you need to win games without them. So I think we'll stick them in A tier. But they're pretty close to S tier, I think. Uh, what else do we have for battle line? So gut rippers. So gut rippers got their new change recently, where they get minus uh, enemy units get minus one to hit them if they're not monsters and not heroes. So they 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 were improved, but I just can't see them being I can't see them being better than brutes and ard boys as a battle line option. I can't see them like I just don't know when you would ever choose to play them. Right? It's like. They're, they're not going to deal more... They don't deal more damage than Ard Boys do. 
right? Like a unit of 10 Ard Boys is going to deal comparable damage to Gut Rippers. Probably better than Gut Rippers. And Ard Boys take the buffs way better, right? They uh, A War Chanter can give Ard Boys that plus one damage with uh, Violent Fury. So, like, what are the Gut Rippers even bringing? With a plus one to hit, plus one to wound, their, three, their attack profile turns into 3301. And it's just not... It's just not going to do it. Unfortunately, I still think that Gut Rippers are going to be C tier, even in this army. They're not unplayable, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't play them. Like, I don't think I would ever choose to play them. You have, you just have so much better battle line options, right? Yeah, Ard Boys and Brutes, right? Ard Boys and Brutes are going to be your battle line option every single game. Uh, so now we're on to the Savage Oryx. So in my How to Win with Big Wah video, I mentioned that it is... Oh, wait, I think that I got these guys in the wrong thing. Yeah, these guys are in the wrong category. But I mentioned that units are going to be, uh, like, treated differently because we're in a, like, our strategy has changed and the rules have changed. So the Savage Oryx don't get to move, right? They don't have exploding hits. They lose, like, if you're going to have a swarm of units, right? Because for 160 points, you get 10 of them, right? So, you know, and they're on little 32 millimeter bases. But, but that's kind of the idea, right? Like, their uh, uh, Chompa and Tooth Shiv has three attacks on a 4301. So if they're getting all the buffs and they're at a 3201, they're still sitting at zero rend, right? And they don't have exploding hits. So you're rolling all these dice and you're gonna get a bunch of hits and then you're and then you're like or exploding sixes. But then you're just gonna sit there and look at the table and say, like, oh, like. Like, I don't know, like, it's just so underwhelming. They, they lose such a big part of their um, their utility. I really think that for the, um, for Big Wah, that the Bone Splitters kind of got the short end of the stick. You know, of all the battle traits that they could have, getting a 6-up ward with war paint just feels really lackluster. But Spirit of Gorkamorka, right? If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a melee weapon by a friendly Bone Splitters unit is a 6, the attack scores two hits on the target instead of one. So that would be so much better that I feel like that would actually maybe make some of these units playable, you know? But, I mean, giving having exploding hits and then plus one to wound, right? You're going to generate a bunch of... A bun or exploding sixes, I keep saying exploding hits. But having exploding sixes and then plus one to wound, those are complementary buffs. That's nice, but... So the question is, are Savage Oryx literally just unplayable? Are they just that bad, where you would never play them? I think so. I think that, you know, let's compare them to Gut Rippers. So they're 10 more points, no more models, and instead of... Yeah, and they don't have, like, Venom-encrusted weapons, right? Yeah. I just can't see Savage Orcs. I think they're probably F tier, maybe C tier, but certainly at the bottom. That's for damn sure. So when you're picking your battle line options, to me, it, it really sort of looks like you're going with Ard Boys and Brutes. Ard Boys and Brutes, for sure. Okay, so let's look at some uh, other ones. Hobgrot, Hobgrot Slittas. Hobgrot Slittas. I love them in Cruel Boys uh, for uh, like a battle line option. But in Big Wad, they can never be battle line. Uh, the rule about t for every unit of Get Rip is you get a unit of Hobgrots is only for um, is only for Cruel Boys. So Slittas. Do you ever want to have a bunch of units running around like that? Like a swarm of units? If you did. Like, if, you, if the role that Hobgrot Slittas would play in this army is just tons of just chaff in the way for cheap, you know? Because you, you can have 20 uh, Hobgrots for the same cost as 10 Savage Orcs, right? So if you're just looking for a ton of bodies, like, that would be their role. But I, I just think that, like, in that case, because they're not getting any any buffs from the army, it might be better just to have Moon Clan Stabas. Right? 
because you're getting 20 models for 125 points instead of 160 points. And yeah, I mean, I just feel like they would just be better. You know, if you have a reinforced or if you have 20 Moon Clan Stabas, they can hold objectives outside of outside of nine inches instead of just outside of six. So if that's what you're looking for, a swarm of units to get on the table and hold objectives, I feel like Moon Clan Stabas are just gonna be better. And so for that reason, I think that Hob oops, I think that Hobgrot Sledas are actually gonna be F tier. I, I can't imagine any situation that you would want to play them. Um over over other things. It's like you you would just never put them on the table. Yeah. Uh Bolt Boys, I think Bolt Boys are oops, Bolt Boys are S tier. The reason I think that Bolt Boys are S tier is because if you're not playing Bolt Boys, why are you playing Big Wah? Seriously. You're not gonna play Bolt Boys? What do you what are you what are you playing from the Cruel Boys army then if you're not playing Bolt Boys? Well, like what do you seriously like what are you playing? Some some heroes? If you're not playing Bolt Boys, I think at that point, I think you're better off just playing the uh, like a different sub faction. You know, if, if it's like, why would you play Big Wah if you're gonna run uh, Bull Boys, Swamp Call of Shamans, uh, Sludge Rakers, uh, Vultures? Like why? Like why are you bothering playing? You might as well just play Cruel Boys at that point. So I think that Bull Boys are not auto included in Big Wah just for that reason. I, I I think I have seen lists that don't run Cruel Boys, but. Um, none that I've, none that I've, or sorry, uh, Bolt Boys, but none that I've really liked. You know, so, I don't know, that's, that's my opinion. I think that, I think that they are auto-includes. At, they're at least eight tier. Bolt Boys are awesome. They're great on their own, they're fine, they don't need buffs, right? Like, you can teleport them around the map to snipe things off. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So I would definitely, uh, play Bolt Boys. Marsh Crawler Slogoth. <sighs> F tier? Or C tier? Marsh Crawler Slogoth. The problem with Marsh Crawler is that he's his buff that he has, his plus one to hit in an 18 inch aura around him, you get that at 16 points. At 16 points, you're going to get a plus one to hit for all of your melee attacks in your army. And you're trying to rush there. So once you get there, once you get to... Uh, 16 points, which you can usually do maybe turn two, but definitely by turn three, then what's he doing? What's Marsh Crawler actually going to do at that point? He's, his aura now does nothing, right? His aura does nothing. And he's not an auric, so he's not getting plus one to hit. He's not getting plus one to wound. He's not getting any of the buffs that come with Big Wah. So... Is he unplayably bad? Like, yes. Like, yes, he he is unplayably bad. Like, don't run this unit. Run this unit in Gloom Spike Gets. When I started collecting Gloom Spike Gets recently, I thought, well, I already have the best unit. I already have a Marsh Crawler, so I'm already, I'm set. So, I mean, F tier, unplayable. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Uh, Gore Gruntas. Gore Gruntas are A tier. I don't think they're auto includes, but they're great. They're great units. They can give a turn one charge. They're tanky. They do there's, They do everything that we want to do in this army. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say they do everything we want to do in this army. They do a lot of what we want to do in this army, but more importantly, they are able to like hold your opponent back um, like early turn one. And that's, like, their role. And they're very, very good at it. They're very, very good at it. Savage Big Stabas. I think Savage Big Stabas are situationally good. Uh, the fact that they are able to, uh, like, counter monsters really well, I think, is a, a big strength of theirs. Um, right? Like, they come in... They're, they're cheap at 100 points. They come in groups of two. Or, they, they sorry, there's, there's two units per... Or two models per unit. Um, they really like the, the plus one to hit, plus one to wound, right? With the plus one to hit, plus one to wound, it turns their attack profile into two, 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 two. So that's really great with three attacks. So you're looking at six dice at two, 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 just really quickly. And so that, but they don't get any of the other, 
Um, they have a six up ward, which is not that impressive. But just out of curiosity. So they're going to have six attacks with two to hit, uh, two to wound, two rend, two damage. So against a four up save, we're expecting them to do just under seven damage with a four up save. So a hundred points for seven damage. Like, that feels pretty good, right? Like, that feels pretty good. And then they have that uh, Definal Fling ability. Each time a model in this unit is slain by an attack made with a melee weapon, before the model is removed, removed from play, pick one enemy unit within three inches of the slain model and roll a die on a two up. No, sorry, add two to the roll if it's a monster. So when, when each model dies, they have a 50% chance of dealing an additional D3 mortal wounds. That's great. If it's a monster, it's a two up. So they have a five out of six chance of dealing an additional D3 mortal wounds. So they don't really need their exploding hits. Like their exploding hits are good, but they don't get them in this sub faction. So having, um, even without it, they're great. Like they're good. If, if you're planning on playing against a bunch of monsters, this is a, a good inclusion in your army. Big stab is. Savage Big Stabbers. Savage, so we have Savage Boar Boys, and then we have Savage Boar Boy uh, Maniacs. So I think that with the Savage Boar Boys and the Savage Boar Boy Maniacs, we're getting into the same problem with the other Savage uh, units. So like the Savage... Um... Oh, did I not put them on my list? Did I get rid of them? Oh yeah, no, sorry, the Savage Oryx, right? Because they're not getting exploding sixes, they're, they're not doing much. You know, their attack profiles aren't great. We're looking at like 4401 for the Savage Sticka and the Tuscan Hooves. No Ren sucks. And then 4301 for their for their Chompa. But that no Ren really hurts. The one damage isn't great. And instead of throwing buckets of dice, you know, like e each model's going to throw about five dice. So without, you know, those exploding those exploding sixes you know they're just they're just not going to get there you know the maniacs are are a little bit better but not much better uh like what's the real difference add one of the attack characteristics of this unit's choppa if this unit made a charge move in the same turn that's what the maniacs are really going to do so but adding more attacks without the exploding sixes we're just not getting the kind of value like it, it really is unfortunate it really is unfortunate i would love to have that exploding sixes ability i feel like you could actually play these units. So, are they just F tier? Like, are they are they actually just F tier? Like, I think so. I think so. I think they're just unplayable. Hmm. Maybe they're not unplayable. Maybe they're not unplayable. Maybe they are F -t or C tier. Oh, I put the more boys here by mistake. I think I uh, forgot to put the savage. The, the I think I messed up and the savage boar boys aren't there. But I'd I'd probably put them both in the same tier. Could you play them? I guess. What are they good for? Screening, pinning. But you would never play them. You would just play other things. Are they much cheaper? They're not. 140 points? 150 points? No, they're just... They're F tier. You would never play them. You're going to play Gorgruntas. Right? You're, you're just going to play Gorgruntas instead. You're, you're never putting these things on the table. Unfortunately. Okay, so... Savage, Auric, more boys. So I think these are... So what are these? These are the buffed up version... Yeah. I mean, it's the same problem. It's the same problem. I almost kind of feel like I want to put... Like... All of these savage... All of these savage orc units are actually just at the bottom. I'm just going to put a couple stars here. This represents pretty much all of the savage orc, savage orc units. And for pretty much the same reasons. Except for the big stabbers. The big stabbers are good. I just recently picked up some big stabbers for my army. But besides that, every other they're just they're just bad, unfortunately. 
Again, it's just that rule. Okay, break a boss. Break a boss is dope. Love me a break a boss. Really high damage. Uh, good with fasten. Good with teleporting and fasten. Um, I don't think that you need, like, I, I don't think he's B tier because I don't think he's situationally good. I think he's always good. I think if you stick him in front of the right thing that needs to die, I think he's going to do that job really well. Uh, he's, he's absolutely great. The, uh, clubs, uh, I wonder, I don't think, are the clubs going to get the, the plus one plus one? Like, if... <sighs> Dude, the, does the mount get the plus one, plus one? Like, he is an auric. Like, it doesn't say anywhere that it excludes mounts. Hmm, I wonder. I can't seem to find the answer to that question at the moment. My, I, ha I have a feeling that it does apply. Because... Uh, if you read the abilities, right, it says that... Um, let's see. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by friendly auric units. And if I... If I look at what qualifies an auric unit, it does say like a break a boss is an auric unit. So I I can't I don't I, I don't I think it would apply to the ironbound clubs. Even if it didn't, the break a boss would still be A tier. So I feel comfortable leaving him in A tier. So I feel the same about a Nash Tooth for the same reason. Nash Tooth uh, is good. Uh, the reason I think he's in A tier is because he's 130 points. He's cheap. He's 130 points. He's less than a unit of brutes. Uh, he's fast. So I I uh, I just big fan. Big fan. Kill a boss on the other hand. <sighs> so this is a kill a boss with stab grot, like a kill a boss on foot. Is this unit worthy of like he's not F tier, right? He's not unplayable. Like he has three up save. Maybe he's B tier. You know what? I think. I think I'll, I'll place him in, in, in B tier. The reason I'll place him in B tier is because right now with Galician Champions, I think he's a little bit better. So I could see why you might want to play a killer boss on foot. But really, like, I just don't though. Like, there's just there's just better options. This is another reason when evaluating units in Big Wah, it's really different than in their home factions because they're competing with the other Oryx as well. So, you know... What is he, 110 points? Uh, kill a boss with Stab Grot. Uh, yeah, no, he's 100 points even. So, you know, he's cheaper than a Mega Boss. But, I don't know. I think I feel comfortable leaving him at C tier. There's just there's just better choices, I feel, uh, in, in, his, in his point range. But, I don't know, he could be B tier. Situationally good? Like, I don't know, probably not. Maniac Weird Knob. So this is another uh, Shaman. This is a Bone Splitters uh, Shaman, if I'm not mis mistaken. Yep. So um, this is the mounted on the back of a boar Shaman. I really like this model. Uh, he has a spell called Bone Spirit. Has a casting value of 7 range of 12. If successfully cast, pick up friendly bone splitters unit add wonder wound rules for attacks made with melee weapons by that unit uh, like I want I want him to be good I want him to be good oh we forgot rogue idol when I saw this unit for the first time I thought to myself how good the maniac weird knob is with rogue idol because rogue idol is a bone splitters unit and a rogue idol has a really good and really strong melee attacks so giving him plus one to wound melee uh, brings his boulder fist attack profile to three two two d6 so that's cool um boulder fist degrades over time down his damage table so it means that he will still have a two up to wound up until he has 14 or more wounds so until he's basically dead so that's cool and then he'll also have his stomp and feet at a two up to wound the whole time so with all out attack it turns his attacks into two 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 d6 and two 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 so that's great like that's awesome 
but I think it's it's going to be something that you use in a Bone Splitters army, not in a Big Wall army. Right? The uh, Rogue Idol is not a orc. So he's not getting the benefits of the other... Uh, but damn! But I... Uh, like, since we're talking about Rogue Idol, is Rogue Idol B tier? Is Rogue Idol a B tier? Because he has that plus one to cast aura. Like, is... Right? Is 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 that going to be good enough? Right? Add one to casting rolls for friendly auric wizards while they're within six inches of any friendly model with this ability. He also adds plus one bravery in an 18 inch aura, but that's not that important for us. So who's he going to buff? He's going to buff Gobsprack, uh, Weird Knob Shaman, Swamp Kala Shaman, Wurgog Prophet. Like, there's so many good casters. If you wanted to play a heavy caster list with lots of endless spells, I think that you could make a case for Rogue Idol. He doesn't get the buffs from the Power of the Wa ability, but he also doesn't need it, right? He doesn't need it. He's going to sit at like a 3-2, 2-D6 and a 3-3, three, 2-2. Three, two, two. Like his, it's pretty good. It's pretty good without it. Having a 5-up ward and 16 wounds is stalling. That's what we want to be doing. Right? Like, the bravery is okay. You know, if we're taking Battleshock tests, we're not going to lose... You know, there's a chance we're, we're going to keep a model, which is also a form of stalling. I don't know. I want to leave him at B tier, because... I want to leave him at B tier. Which I think then, therefore, makes Maniac Weird Knob also... B tier for the same reason he's situationally good if the rogue idol is situationally good giving that plus one to wound is cool and it, because he's also a bone splitters wizard he's also going to help you generate those points you know I don't know I think so uh, Merc Dog with, with Belchabana is going to be a B tier for the same reason that he is a B tier in the cruel boys army if that's what your meta is if there's lots of if there's lots of uh, spells running around giving you a hard time, you know, playing this is good. You could also do a... Um, you could also do, like, uh, in this Season 2 meta, you could throw, um, you know, uh, uh, Aspect of the Champion on him. So that, so that would be good. So he's just straight up B tier. Uh, Mega Boss is A tier. Mega Boss is just such a strong, such a strong unit that, uh, like he he can smash face. You can throw a destroyer on him, right? Uh, you could even put him in the new uh, Galatian Command Battalion. Stick him with some reinforced brutes. Like he's scary. He's scary. So that's pretty cool. He's also 140 points, so you can like throw him at a target and he can die before he really gets like the all the WA points. And that's okay because he can, he can trade really well, especially with his fight on death ability. It's great. Savage Auric Ard Boys are bad. F tier. Same with the rest of the Savage Aurics. You want some better shooting, right? Like there's just, there's better shooting. Play Bolt Boys, you know? Um, let's just do a quick comparison. So Arrow Boys, units of, unit of 10 for 140 points. Like, it's better just to have three Bull Boys for 120 points, rather than 140 points for 10. Right, their, their attacks are just bad. Yeah, like, they're good against monsters, but I wouldn't even say that they're, like, better against monsters. Right, they have zero rend, but their rend is one if it's, if it has a monster. Again, ex exploding sixes. Oh no, maybe that's only for melee attacks. Anyway, just, just, no good. No good. Oh shit, just deleting columns left and right. I want to delete rows, sucka. So here's some more leaders. So, Savage Big Boss. I think that the Savage Big Boss is going to fall prey to the Bone Splitter problem. Right, he's got six attacks at 3312. Um, and his other ability, Let Me Add Him. It gives, lets another Bone Splitter unit fight, but you're not running any Bone Splitter units. 
right? Like that's 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 the thing. It's like you're not running fighty bone splitter units unless you're running savage big stabas. So if you have like a reinforced unit of savage big stabas, and you have a savage big boss beside them, is he good then? Like he's cheap. He's a Galatian champion. Hmm. That unit fights immediately. So with a reinforced unit of big stabas sitting next to him. Yeah, but then the thing is, is that you're probably going to be teleporting your big stabas away to fight, right? To get in there. And so this is not... But, you know, I think... I think we can make the Savage Big Boss C tier. I wouldn't say he's situationally good, but if you wanted to run a list with big stabas, you could probably run a big boss with it as well. Hmm. Hmm. But it's probably just better just to have, just to pick the big stabas to fight. Yeah. I mean, he can stay there. Swamp Kala Shaman is B tier. Uh, great model. I think that if you're running a lot of bold boys, he gets better. Right? If you need good shooting, he gets better. I think if you're running endless spells, he gets better. If you want to run a, a caster heavy list, he gets better. I think uh, he's situationally good, depending on what kind of list you want to run. Uh, the War Doc. I don't really know how I feel about the War Doc. Um, you know, he's a he's a wizard, but his 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 ability, like he's he's a Bone Splitters wizard for only 80 points, but his ability only affects Bone Splitters units. Right. His little dances only affect Bone Splitters units. And I, like, add one to the save roll, and there's a chance it does nothing. Add one to the casting. Like, we just don't need this guy. But I don't think he's unplayable F tier. I don't think he's unplayable F tier. Like, he could give plus one to casting to your Wergog Prophet. He could give plus one to save to Rogue Idol. Heal, heal D3 wounds. Healing your Wargog is fine. I think his redeeming quality is he's so cheap. He's only 80 points. I would probably rather run an Endless Spell over him. So C tier's fine, but I don't think he's unplayable. Kill a boss on Vulture, A tier. Very strong uh, combat unit. Um, I think he's like he he likes the buffs. You know he's good at dealing with uh, stuff on the side. Like I think he's really good. Maw Crusher. I don't know if Maw Crusher. This is a mega boss on Maw Crusher. I don't know if I would call him uh, B tier or C tier. Here's the problem with with a Maw Crusher. It's a lot of points, right? And what does the Maw Crusher excel at? Alpha striking. The Maw Crusher excels swiftly moving across the table and smashing into your opponent really early. We don't want to do that in this army. We want to sit in the back and I also forgot Craig knows. We want to sit and stall and the Maw Crusher just isn't conducive with that strategy. If we're trying to stall and we have 480 points in the back of the room sitting there, what the hell are we doing? Nothing? We just have 480 points sitting, having, producing no value? That's bad. And if we're charging him in early, it's like he's filling the same role at that point as Gorgrunt is, but he's costing so much more. And if your opponent can pick him off, it's like, it just feels bad. You know? He just feels bad. So, the question is, is, is there a situation in which the Maw Crusher is strong? Is there, like, a meta where you'd want to play a Maw Crusher. I just, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. If, you're, if your meta is monster heavy and big model heavy, uh, it's like he's not, he's not gonna do good there. Like, yeah, I don't know, C tier. Unfortunately, C tier, right? And then since I forgot Kragnos, we might as well talk about Kragnos for almost the same reasons, but, but for worse, I think Kragnos is unplayable in Big Wah. 
you're, what are you going to do? You're going to put... So, Kragnos costs... Well, like, what does he cost? 720 points? Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna check it out because I, I want to make sure. Kragnos, the end of Empire. Uh, yeah, 720 points. And when he... His, one of his big abilities is that he charges in with a bunch of other things, right? Let's see what is... Um, yeah, there's like an 18-inch range where people make 3d6 charges instead of 2d6 charges. But you don't want to be charging with everything. You're trying to stall. So, if he's sitting in the back doing nothing for three turns, that, that that's pointless. Right? Like, that's not accomplishing anything. Like, he's, he's tanky, right? But, I don't know. I think he's actually unplayable in Big Wah. He's great in Bone Splitters. He's good in Iron Jaws. And I think he's unplayable in Big Wah and Crew Boys. Castle armies, right? Delaying armies. Kragnos is not... For his points, is it bringing enough value to what we're at, for what we're trying to do? Um, snatch a boss. I kind of want to say that snatch a boss is uh, B tier. I think that he might be situationally good depending on what else you're running in your list. You know, if you're running uh, lots of bull boys, I think he's good. If, uh, if you're running some cruel boy heroes, I think he's good. He's good at maybe he's A tier. He's good at counter-punching, which is something that we, we want and like in this army. So, yeah, I mean... These these Cruel Boy damage units are strong in our army. The problem with the Cruel Boy army is we don't have really good battle line. And we don't have anything that... Like, no, um, no cavalry units. We can't send units sort of out on the map really quickly to grab objectives. Our best for that is... Um, uh, is Hobgrots, right? Because because they can run and shoot. You know, it gives them like a 5 inch plus D6 run movement speed kind of effectively, right? And they're still, you know, throwing their scrap grenades, which are good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think Snatcher Boss is probably A tier. I think he's just going to be strong. If he's in your list, he's going to be strong. There's not a, like, I think he's... Is he always strong? If you're running no bull boys. Is he good? I don't know. Maybe I'll stick him in B tier. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this one. He could be B tier. He could be A tier. I'm going to leave him in A tier just because I like him. Uh, Gobsprack, I think, is, is B tier. Is Gobsprack B tier? Yeah. If you have a magic heavy meta, I think he's good. I think if you don't have a magic heavy meta, I don't think he's that strong. Giving him, like, the plus one to, to his unbind rolls is good. That really helps him out a lot. The fact that he has multiple unbinds. He's, he's a three-cast wizard, right? But the fact that he has multiple unbinds... I don't know, maybe he's maybe he's eight. No, he's not eight tier. I really don't think he's eight tier. Yeah, his mouth of... So his mouth of Mork ability, right? The redeploy to... Or the unleash hell to cruel boy units... It's like, that's okay, but because there's not a, you know, not all of our units are Cruel Boy units, it, it becomes less strong. Um, the Mork says no ability, you know, D3 mortal wounds for every unbind is good. Uh, because you're getting that plus one to your magic. So now when you're unbinding, you are, you're going to deal that D3 mortal wounds or on a nine up that D6 mortal wounds. So that could be good if your opponent is running lots of little... Like a Seraphon army, if your opponent's running lots of little casters with few wounds and you're, you know, unbinding, that can be pretty strong. He has a 6-up ward, but a 6-up ward is just not all that impressive. So, yeah, I think B-tier's fine. Swamp Boss, Skemdrek, I would just stick him with Snatch a Boss. They're, they're very, very comparable. Okay, so now we're sort of down to the end here. Let's see what else we got here. Not gonna lie, these units I'm not as familiar with uh, compared to some of the other ones. So we got Hedraka. Hedraka is a, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm just gonna pull up the information here too. No, I'm, I'm mistaken. Oh no, I'm not. So Hedraka is like a, um, um, he's a Wurgog prophet. He's a named Wurgog prophet, but he's worse. Am I right on this? No, I'm wrong on this. So what is this? What am I thinking of? 
Did I include this thing twice? Looks like I did include it twice. Hedrock is mad mob. Yeah, I'm totally confused about who this is. I'm just gonna look it up real quick. No, this is this is the workog prophet little 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 gang. Right? It's Hedrock. That's why I had it twice, because it's Hedrock and then his mad mob. And I believe that when you take them, you have to take them all together. Right. So this is for 200 points, it's a worse workog prophet. For more points, it's worse than a Wargog Prophet because he doesn't have the Wargog Mask ability. And the other, all the other things that he brings with him uh, don't make up for it. In fact, he's not even a wizard. I'm looking at his War Scroll. He's not even a wizard. So he's not a... He's not a... Uh, he's not a Bone Splitter's wizard. I'm just going to double check make sure that's true. No, he is. He is a wizard. His his uh, unit is not. He's also considered a workog prophet. That's funny. But uh, again, his uh, his abilities just aren't as good as a workog prophet. And you're you're paying and you're paying more money t or more points to lose the best parts of the workog. So F tier, like actually F tier, like you're you're just not gonna play him ever. You're gonna play a workog prophet instead. So, like, to me, that just seems, that just seems bad. Okay, so Iron Skull Boys. So Iron Skull Boys, if I'm remembering correctly, is like an elite version of a, um, Ard Boys unit. If I'm remembering correctly. I think the reason that I'm not as familiar with, with this, uh, group of units is because they're just not as good. Right. So the Iron Skull Boys, for, they are 80 points. Um, so the, they're the same as Art Boys. They are not battle line. So you're losing out on that, Iron Skull Boys. They're not battle line. Um, they have... One of the models out of the four has a five up ward, and the other three have a six up ward. But there's still only two wounds each. And a four up save, just like Art Boys. So we're losing two wounds, but we're gaining a five up ward and a six up ward on like two of the models. But we're but we're losing a, a two wounds. And yeah, I mean, like their attacks are fine. You know, they're gonna have some some better attacks probably than Ard Boys, but they're not battle line. They're not battle line. I think I think they're C tier. I don't think they're unplayable. I think that if you had 80 extra points in your list and you have already filled up your battle line requirements instead of playing another unit of Ard Boys here, if that's what you wanted to do, if you did want to play just more bodies on the table. Instead of playing another unit of Ard Boys, you could play Iron Skulls Boys instead. And they'll be, and then, you know, they're going to lean into what we want to do in our army a, a little bit better, which is, which is survive and stall. So, you know, C tier, sure. That's fine. And then Morgog's Crushes, I th believe this is a unit of, uh, like, a, it's like an elite unit of Brutes. Um, but what are we... But again, same same kind of problem, you know? They're, they are not battle line. Uh, they're only a unit of three instead of a unit of five brutes. But they're only 80 points. They're only 80 points. Decent attack profiles. Um, you know, a couple of their attacks have two damage. They have the duff up to big thing. Yeah, let's see. So they have another ability called uh, Beast Basha. The first time a monster is destroyed by an attack made by this unit, add one to ruin rules for attacks made by this unit for the rest of the battle. So that's not great because we're hopefully going to get plus one to wound rules anyway. You know, I think I think it's the same thing. I think that they're just going to be C tier. I don't think they're unplayable. I think that if you were, you know, if, if you were against a monster heavy meta and you wanted more bodies, you know, it's like a situation on a situation on a situation, then they could be playable. But... So I don't think that they're like unplayably bad. I think that they're probably just uh, C tier. 
Okay, so did I miss anything? I don't think I did. We could talk about uh, the incarnate of Gur, right? That's something we could talk about. Um, so I'll just write incarnate. Incarnate, probably C tier. I don't like the incarnate of Gur. I don't think it's good for the game. I'm not a big fan. Is it situationally good? Like maybe? Hmm. The thing about the incarnate that is interesting is that, or I should call him Kron Spine, I guess, is his ability to, well, he's not an orc, right? So he's not gonna get any of the buffs. He's not gonna generate any of the buffs, right? Because he's not on, on his charge and being stuck in combat. He doesn't generate points either. It's one of the other problems with, with Kragnos and with um, Rogue Idol, right? He's not gonna generate points that way. But he does give, I mean, in your charge phase, if this incarnate is within 12 inches of an endless spell that was summoned by an enemy wizard, it can attempt to charge and it can make a charge move as long as the charge finishes within half an inch of the enemy model or endless spell that was summoned. In addition, this incarnate can carry out the devour spell monstrous rampage. So, you know, do you have lots of, do you have lots of um, endless spells in your meta? I don't know. Probably C tier. I don't think he's... Like, he's a lot of points. And it's the same kind of problem. It's like, are you going to throw him at your opponent really early? If you do, now we're comparing him to Gore Gruntas. So he is, like, uh, at least worth as many points as a reinforced unit. Like, way more than a reinforced unit. He's not going to survive as well. Yeah, like, he's just C tier. If you really wanted to run a, a, a list with uh, like tons of wizards and if there was a lot of endless spells, again, we're talking, you know, a, a, a condition on a condition on a condition, and then he's probably playable, but still probably not your best choice. Hmm. Okay, so that's it. So let's just do a quick recap. So for F tier, we have Killabo because it's bad. We have all of these Savage Auric units because they lose their exploding sixes to hit. And that just nerfs them into the ground. Hobgrot Slidas, because they're not orcs. They're not generating they're not generating anything. There's uh, better things to have, like Moon Moon Clan Stabas, if we wanted to um, sort of have that like really like a, a, a swarm of units. Uh, Marsh Crawla is F tier because he's not an Auric. He his plus one to hit is is redundant in our army. Right? Meh, just just meh. Kragnos because Kragnos is like an Alpha Strike model in a control army. It just doesn't work. Head Raka's Mad Mob because Wargog Prophet is just straight, strictly better in all respects for 30 fewer points. C tier. So these are, you know, like your, your Gut Rippas. They're not unplayable, but there's just way better options. You know, maybe if you were playing a bunch of... Yeah, but even then, it's like, oh, I'm playing a bunch of Bolt Boys. Cool. So I'm going to play a Snatcher Boss. Cool. So I'm going to play Gut Rippas. Eh. Nope. Still not going to play Gut Rippers, so kill a boss for the same reason, just not a particularly strong model. Uh, Savage Big Boss, the only reason he's not on F tier is because maybe you can make him work with Savage Big Stabas, but nah, he's just an F tier. Savage Big Boss, you're just an F tier. I'm just going to lump you in with all the other Savage Orcs, unfortunately. Uh, War Doc, um, same, same kind of problem, just like a pretty weak Bone Splitters Wizard. Uh, Maw Crusher sitting in the back, doing nothing, not producing value for the points, not stalling, just too many points. And then we got the uh, Iron Skulls boys and the Morgogs crushes. Uh, again, situation on situation on situation, maybe, because they're so cheap you want to throw them in. And the Incarnate, same deal. Caster heavy meta, you're playing lots of casters. You're expecting to run into a ton of endless spells. Like, sure, he has some utility, but not enough, I think, to really put him anything above a C tier. Savage Big Stabas, B tier, because they are really good, and they're really good against monsters. Right? Like, they're good, and they're good against monsters. There's going to be better options, but if you are playing a fun game, or if you're running into a lot of monsters in your meta, these guys can definitely be worth it. 
Rogue Idol B tier um, because he has a nice five up board, so he's good at stalling. He has lots of wounds, which is nice. Uh, he's he's slappy, and his plus one to casting. He's he's really there because uh, his plus one to casting. Again, if you're running a lot of wizards or a lot of endless spells, right? Like you can you can kind of push the magic dominance for this army if that's how you wanted to play it, and uh, he could be good for that reason. Maniac Weir Knob, I actually think is a C tier. I think the idea of like condition on condition on condition applies here. Like he's he's good if you're gonna run um, the rogue idol, but if you're not running the rogue idol, you know, so and he's not good on his own. You might still decide to run the rogue idol, idol but not run a maniac weird knob, so we'll bump him down to seat here. Merc knob, right? His nice twelve inch, uh, you know, four up ward against magic in a magic heavy meta. He's good. He's eighty points. You can find a spot for him in your list. We struggle with in Big Wa with our heroes, just like we do in, um, just like we do in Cruel Boys. Don't forget, we have to include. We're gonna include a Weird Knob Shaman, a Wergog Prophet, and a War Chanter in every list that we make, which means we only have three hero spots left. Merc Knob in the right meta would be competing for one of those uh, spots. Similar idea with the Swamp Call Shaman. If our list lends itself a certain way, I could see running a Swamp Call Shaman. Same thing with Gobbis Brack. If we're going for that magic supremacy, you know, like you could do a fun list that's got, you know, those three heroes and then a Swamp Call Shaman and a Gobbis Brack and a Rogue Idol, right? And all of a sudden it's like you have tons of casting. You're going to throw a bunch of endless spells in your list. Oh, we should do that. We should also cover some endless spells. Or how about we do some honorable mentions for endless spells? Why not? This video is almost an hour. Might as well make it a full hour, right? Um, a tier. Brute. Battle line. Hard hitting. Great unit. Probably going to see, like, almost S tier. Same with Gore Gruntas. Great unit. Does everything we want to do. Is is going to be that turn one charge to help us generate some points if, if that's what we feel like we need to do. Great unit. Uh, break a boss. High damage. Teleport, Fasten, awesome. A Nash Tooth, same, same, very similar reason. Um, Nash Tooth is probably on this list the closest to being bumped down to a B tier. But the fact that he's fast, he's only 130 points. He costs less than a Mega Boss, right? He's 10 fewer points than a Mega Boss. If we want, let, let's just do a quick side by side comparison of a Kill Boss on Nash Tooth and a Auric. Mega Boss. So the Nash Tooth, let's assume that he charges, so he's gonna get plus one to hit. Uh yep, so that means that his attack profile, so we get so it's it's everything, right? Yeah, so his 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 hound gets plus one to hit and his he gets plus one to hit. So what are we looking at here? So there's four attacks, and with his alt with his to hit, it's gonna be so let's actually, you know what? Let's just assume that they both are getting the full benefit of the of the of the um, of our built-up wall points. So two to hit, two to wound, one rend, two damage against a four-up save. He's doing three point seven uh, damage, and his hound. Well, I'm just gonna make sure I write this down. Or did I do this one already? No, I didn't. So he's gonna do three point seven damage, and his mount is going to do 4.63 damage so uh 4.63 plus 3.7 so he's going to do 8.8.66 uh expected damage versus oh sorry 8.33 against a four up save so then our warwick mega boss has uh eight attacks and we're just going to assume and then it's two two one two so two uh two one rend, two damage against a four-up save. We're expecting 7.41 uh, damage, and that's with their plus one to hit, plus one to wound. So a little bit less damage, but you know, not 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 by much, right? Like less than one expected damage versus a four-up save for uh, a mega boss. But the killer boss uh, doesn't really have a lot of uh, other benefits, right? He, um, his all part of the plan really isn't going to come into play, like, almost at all. It might as well not be on the War Scroll. The Auric Mega Boss, uh, he can issue the same command up to two times in the same phase. So, like, that's good. 
that's a good ability. Even though it's only for Iron Jaws, it's still really strong. And then his dead fight ability, uh, fighting on death if he hasn't fought on the combat phase, is also really good. It means you're going to get your values worth, you know, so he's really good. And his strength from victory ability is also really good. So what are we trading? Like, like what's, um, yeah, I mean, the Nash Tooth has <clears throat> three more wounds and seven inch or uh, six inches more move. So, like, yeah, the Nash Tooth and the Mega Boss are, are very similar. They're going to fill similar kinds of roles. Um, it depends if you want more mobility or if you want a little bit more fighty, right? I'm not even sure. Like, I would even say, even though the Nash Tooth has three more wounds, I would even say he's more survivable. Because the fight on death is so strong. It's it's really good. Uh, kill the boss on Vulture, eight tier. Uh, like, for the same reasons that Nash Tooth is, right? He's he's pretty cheap, 220 points, right? It's not that expensive. He's fast. He can take fast in. Um, yeah, he's great. He's great. And Snatch a Boss and Swamp Boss come direct, same kind of deal. Just, just a really all-around good, solid hero who's also a monster. Like, just just really good. Just great. So, up to S tier. Weird Nub Shaman we're gonna, is probably going to be our general because he's the only one that can cast uh, the Teleport spell. Hand of Gork. So, that's that's happening. War Chanter is S tier because he has to be. We have to auto-include him. He generates us points. Same thing with the War God Prophet. Easily the best Bone Splitters Wizard. Really, 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 really strong, especially this season. Giving him those uh, those wards that four, uh, four up and five up ward is great. Definitely going to auto include him in every list that we make. Uh, our boys are also being auto included. Most lists that I see will run like reinforced units of, of Ard boys, sometimes double reinforced. Throwing 15 Ard boys into the middle of the, of the map and uh, fighting there with them. On a rally, on a four up rally, you can return up as many as five models. So that's great, right? You know, they're doing everything they want to do. They're a great tar pit unit. They're survivable. They have the six up ward for two of the models. They're awesome. And Bolt Boys, one of my favorite units in the game. Good range damage. Excellent target to be teleported. All around just fantastic. So then let's look just really quickly at some, at some endless spells. Uh, what am I looking at here? Just really quickly at some endless spells. So let's see what's going to be good for endless spells. Uh, I think personally, like you can always run endless spells that deal damage. That's always a fine choice. Like you can run gnashing jaws. That's totally fine. Some, um, some endless spells that provide more utility that are good. Um, I don't know. Like is chromatic cogs good? Not sure. Hmm. I mean, for 70 points, I think Cogs is pretty good if you're going for like a really heavy wizard setup. Rerolling casting rolls for friendly wizards that are wholly within 12 of this endless spell. Yeah, I mean, like that's, that, that could be pretty cool. If you're going for like a really heavy caster list, I think that could be cool. Generally speaking, I don't see a lot of big wah lists going for, uh, for that kind of style. Generally, they're more going for like a bunch of like foot units, like Ard Boys and and uh, and uh, and brutes and stuff. But if you did want to go that way, Chromatic Cogs uh, could be good. I'll I'll keep a little list. Right. Let's go. Like I don't think there's any S tier endless spells, and I'm only gonna talk about uh, A tier and B tier endless spells. Life Swarm, meh. Still kind of expensive. Let's see what else is good. Laucha on the Soul Seeker could be pretty good because you have lots of wizards and mobility is really good. So one wizard could cast it, another wizard can get in and, and move. So like that's okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it, it could be pretty good. Um, let's see what else. What else? Okay, so here's kind of what I think about the, the endless spells. You know, Purple Sun of Shaiish is really good. Uh, you can throw it out in front of you, uh, dissuade your opponent from coming at you. Shards is good because it it's it's stalling, it's providing uh, like a slow right. Soul snare shackles I think are better. Uh, it it's more it's a little bit more lockdown, uh, right? I cannot attempt 
a charge. That's that's the big one, right? They can't they can't actually get into you that turn, which is nice. Skull Soul Scream Bridge is good, right? Like teleporting units around around the uh, the map is good. Same sort of reason for Umbral Spell Portal. We have a lot of spells, so if you were running something like if you were running a Gobsprack, uh, I could see I could see doing this, running this. Uh, and then just a quick note. No, you know what? That, that's that's plenty for today. Did I hit the hour mark? Yes, that's an hour and a few seconds. So, uh, uh, what did I miss? What did I make a mistake on? What do you d disagree with? Please comment in the section below and join the Discord. Did I tell you that I just figured I got a quick tutorial on Tabletop Simulator, and in my Discord we're gonna start playing some we're gonna start playing some games. So if you're still watching at this point of the video, it sounds to me like you're an Org War Clans nerd, and you should just come play some games with us. Like subscribe. Wah.